Hello everyone, my name is James Coleman, I'm a product design graduate and a Maxwell Render mentor and tutor in South East England. Today I'd like to bring you the first of a new series of Coleman's Thoughts, where I give my thoughts and opinions on subtopics in CAD rendering, which is my chosen specialist area in product design. For this first video I'd like to talk about photography versus CAD rendering, and this visual report that you're about to see was actually done as part of an independent study in my product design degree. So let's get started. As you can see this report goes through 25 different categories, and for each category I did some research, as well as some personal opinion, and I decided whether photography or CAD rendering was the better option. Or in some cases where both were an equally good option, it was a draw. Now please remember that for the most part this is written from a product design point of view, where certain categories will have a different weighting towards them than an entirely different specialist area, for example architecture. And although I do specialise in Maxwell Render, this report was written without bias towards any render engine. It was just CAD rendering in general. Of course the report does use a lot of images and photographs from other people as well as myself, and where appropriate all of those images are attributed to their owners. So starting off, accuracy. Now this will be the behaviour of light, and in particular the behaviour of colour. Now first of all as you can see, this will largely depend on the render engine used. However, despite this, accuracy was an easy one. A camera is designed to give accuracy, and making a render engine to simulate accuracy is very very difficult. So for this first category, Photography was an instant win. Now the next category was animation. Now this is not a video recording using a video camera. This is individual images being combined together into an animation. And due to the fact that rendering isn't affected by gravity and you can make your models do whatever you like without the risk of damaging them when you move them, it is very easy to set up a 3D model to be animated. It does require software that supports it, but nowadays that kind of software is readily available. 3ds Max, Cinema 4D, even SolidWorks supports basic animation. So this was an easy win for CAD rendering. Next was camera optimization, and again, I know that these screenshots are from Maxwell, that's just because of the fact that it's the render engine I use, but I do acknowledge that this will largely depend on the render engine used. And what I mean by camera optimization is making sure that every little fine detail is as good as it possibly can be. And in this case, CAD rendering won, because you can set up a lens without requiring an entirely different physical lens to attach to the front of a DSLR. You can absolutely guarantee that your focal point is spot on where you need it. And of course, in a lot of render engines nowadays, you can see the results full screen very quickly. The next category was compositing, making a product look like it's in a real world location. And for this particular page, I decided to take an automotive theme. Now, obviously with a camera, this is very, very simple. You just need the product and the location. As long as you have those two things, you are already compositing. However, with CAD rendering, although you don't need to go to the location in order to composite, you will require an HDRI of the environment in order to get realistic illumination, reflections, etc. And anyone can tell you that compositing is a very, very difficult task to pull off realistically. Getting the perspective to match right, getting the lighting to match, is a very time-consuming process compared to clicking a button. So for this category, photography won immediately. The next category was cost, and this is the first draw. Both photography and CAD rendering can be very expensive. They can be very cheap, I admit, but for professional use, you're talking about thousands of pounds. Maybe in photography, you could get away with a few hundred for a decent camera and another few hundred for a decent lens. You might keep your costs under a thousand especially at entry level. However, for CAD rendering, considering the cost of the modeling software and the cost of the rendering software and the cost of decent computer hardware, you are definitely talking thousands. However, the reason that this category is a draw and not a win for photography is because from a product design point of view, in order to render a model of a prototype, you only need a 3D model, not a real world prototype. A real world prototype will take time and money. So that is the reason that this category is a draw. The next category is format, and this is also a draw. And when I say format, I don't mean format as in erasing data on a hard drive. I mean the format of image that you are left with. Now in a decent CAD render engine, you can render to a wide variety of different image formats. Whereas in photography, you're likely to be limited to JPEG, TIFF and RAW. And each camera manufacturer might have their own different version of RAW files, which again will require codecs. A CAD render engine can render immediately to 32-bit. To do the same thing in photography, you need more exposures, or a very expensive camera. However, 
The reason that this category is a draw and not a win for CAD rendering again comes down to software. From a product design point of view, you need to have the modeling software in the first place. And in some cases, that means having a very specific operating system on your PC. So this category is a draw. Next is hardware support. And again, this category broadly covers, first of all, the amount of hardware that you need to get started. Secondly, the amount of hardware available for you to choose from in order to get started. Now, photography has a wide range of cameras available. And as I'm sure any photographer will tell you, a good photographer can make any hardware work. It doesn't matter what it is, how much it costs, whatever. However, for CAD rendering, in a lot of cases, there are very, very specific requirements for the hardware that you need from a very specific manufacturer, minimum clock rates, etc. In the grand scheme of things, there is actually very little choice when it comes to choosing a computer to do your CAD modeling and rendering on. Next is showing human interaction. Again, because this is from a product design point of view, this is showing humans using the products you are trying to show off. It's one of the main things that product designers have to focus on. How do users interact with your products and how do you show someone a user doing just that? Obviously, with a camera, you just get a model to use your product or to interact with your product in however they need to. With CAD rendering, that's very difficult. It's a type of compositing, so it needs the lighting to be right, the perspective to be right, etc, etc. And you almost certainly can't just render a human in place because that's going to look terrible. So photography won this category easily. Then instances. And by instances, I mean showing more than one example of a specific product. Now in some cases you won't need to do that. Why show someone five identical chairs when one will do fine? But in some cases it will be necessary. And when it is, CAD rendering is much, much better at it. Because for photography, you need multiple prototypes. Okay, fair enough, making five chairs doesn't necessarily take five times as long as making one chair, because you get better at it, more experienced. But it's still going to take a lot longer than just creating an instance of something inside a 3D modeling program. So CAD rendering one on this category. The next category was knowledge. And again, this category means not just learning the skill in the first place, but also finding someone with that skill to teach you or to employ whenever you need them. And from my personal experience, it's much easier to start learning photography than it is learning CAD rendering. There's a lot more support, there's a lot more users, it's a bigger community. CAD rendering is a more difficult skill to learn. However, when you have learned it, you can become very specialized very quickly. But for learning even just the basics of product photography, photography won this category. Next was light. And again, this is very similar to the earlier category of accuracy. But this category isn't considering colour, contrast, things like that. This is just how light behaves. And as good as some CAD rendering engines get, they are still not up to scratch to how light behaves. Otherwise, they would be the undisputed kings. So, for this category, photography won easily. Next was low light. And this category was considered because sometimes it is essential to use low lighting conditions for products. And in low light conditions, CAD rendering performed better. You don't get any high ISO grain, you don't get any motion blur, and it won this category. Speaking of motion blur, when you do want it, it's a very effective way of showing motion, especially in a still photograph. And in some products, you do need to show that. And although in 3D CAD rendering, it's certainly easier to animate an object in a very precise way, and then to render it, the accuracy will not be as good as real life. So photography won this category. The next category was organic objects. This isn't something that often comes up in product design, but sometimes it does, so it was something I needed to look at. And as you might expect, when it came to organics, photography won for two reasons. Firstly, it can be very difficult to model organic structures in CAD rendering, especially when using software more orientated towards product design. Secondly, it's usually just as difficult to actually render them realistically. But with a camera, although it will require you to have a real subject that stays still, it is much easier to photograph an organic object than model it and render it. So photography won this category. Now the next category is one of the main reasons I started this report. And of all the categories, this is probably the most important from my point of view in this report. And that is whether or not it's better to build a real world prototype and take a photograph of it, or if it's better to model it in CAD software and make a render of it. Here you can see some of the different stages of working through some projects. One resulted in a real world prototype that was photographed. One resulted in a CAD model that was rendered. And for this category, CAD rendering won. This will be a very personal opinion, 
but for me it was much easier to make a 3D model and then render it compared to making a prototype of something in real life and then taking a photograph of it. Although obviously this will differ depending on your skills at prototyping or CAD modeling and of course in a lot of cases these days a real world prototype will still require a 3D model if you are rapid prototyping it. But overall for me CAD rendering won this category. The next category is realism and of course this is the most important to a lot of people and critically again the realism of CAD rendering will largely depend on the render engine used. However, despite this, photography won this category. Some CAD renderers are very realistic and good enough to fool a lot of people, but photography literally is real. And even for me, CAD rendering isn't there yet. The next category is reflective, and of course this comes up a lot in jewellery, but any product that has reflective surfaces will be very susceptible to imperfections in either its surface or the lights around it, and also the reflections of any camera equipment. But in CAD rendering, there's no imperfections unless you put them there yourself, and there's no reflection of the camera. So CAD rendering won this category. The next category is replication. Now that might be the replication of two different things. Firstly, a different resolution of an image, or the same lighting setup for a different object. Now in photography, obviously a lighting setup has to be set up each and every time you want to take a photo. And if you move the object you're taking a photograph of, you may never get it in the exact same position ever again. The same for the camera, the same for the camera settings, the same for the lighting setup. Whereas in CAD rendering, once that file is saved, those lights will never move. The render settings will never change. You can send the file off maybe to a render farm, and it will render exactly as you set it up. That's not possible with photography. So CAD rendering won this category. The next category was resolution, and that is the size of the image in pixels. In a camera, this is limited by the size of the image sensor in the camera itself. You can, of course, usually select a lower resolution, but you can't select a higher resolution in a single image. Going higher than the sensor resolution requires stitching together multiple images. In CAD rendering, the resolution will be potentially unlimited, although it will require a large amount of memory in order to render. But still, CAD rendering won this category. The next category was scale. With photography, if you want to photograph a building, or a product, or a very small piece of jewellery, it may require different lenses, almost certainly require different lighting setups, and camera settings. Now with CAD rendering, Yes, it will still require different camera settings, but the fact is that because you're not dealing with real-world objects, you can quite easily render something the size of a building or something the size of a piece of jewellery using the same hardware. And because you can use extreme values for lighting and camera settings, you don't need to pull off any tricks like focus stacking. So CAD rendering wins this category. Next category is small detail. Now, of course, with photography and a real-world product, you're going to need to put those small details in. However, for a lot of products, and especially the materials that they're made out of, you don't need to put those details in, they are already there. However, in CAD rendering, all of those little details need to be put in, and sometimes they're easy to forget, or difficult to do in the first place. So photography wins this category. Next was speed, and in this case, the category was a dead heat. From a product design point of view, having a photograph of a finished prototype can take just as long as building a 3D model and making a decent render of it. Yes, it will depend upon skill level, but overall, there was no winner in this category. The next category was subsurface scattering. This category might seem a bit specific to CAD rendering, but it's significant enough in product design to be worthy of mention. And although this is another category where the render engine used will change the outcome, photography was the clear winner. Just like organic materials, subsurface scattering is something that photography doesn't have any special requirements for, but CAD rendering does. So photography won this category. The next category was textures. And this was a close one to call, because in CAD rendering, once you've applied a texture, you can tweak it, you can adjust it, you can change the colour, change the scale, and fine-tune it to however you want. However, it will be there in the first place, but in CAD rendering, you have to put it in. And overall, photography won this category. And finally, the last category is variety. This is showing off the same product with the same physical characteristics, but different materials. That could be colour, texture, whatever. And in this case, CAD rendering was a clear winner. With the same CAD model, you can apply different textures to be different colours, different reflectiveness, different transparency, whatever. But with photography, unless you want to get clever adjusting the hue of something in an external imaging processing software, you will need a different prototype for every single material. So CAD rendering was an easy winner here. And that's it, that's all 25 categories of this report. And the conclusion was that neither photography nor CAD rendering 
won a majority of the categories. Photography was better than CAD rendering in 12 categories compared to 10, but that's still less than half. Because of cases where photography and CAD rendering were equal, photography does not have a majority vote. And to myself, and specifically to my lecturers, this report showed that both photography and rendering have their own place. They have their own uses in their own specialist ways. And this report emphasised that neither method of visualisation is significantly better than the other, and that they could both be used whenever they were the most suitable. Before this report, a lot of lecturers were still apprehensive about the use of CAD rendering in product design. However, with this report and the other elements of my independent study, they've seen that sometimes the use of CAD rendering is justified. And my independent study certainly got their attention, and everyone found it very interesting and very relevant. And in case you're wondering, yes, it got a first. Thanks very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this, and I hope it's taught you something. Let me know in the comments below what you think. Do you think I'm right? Do you think any categories should have a different winner? Are there any categories that you think I've missed out? I'd love to hear from you. Thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you again soon.